فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى Today we're going to start the explanation of the book كتاب الصفات كتاب الصفات written by الإمام الحافظ أبي الحسن علي ابن عمر ابن أحمد الدار قطني رحمه الله So we're going to start the explanation of this book بإذن الله الكريم <coughs> But before we start the book I want to talk about a couple of things The first thing inshallah ta'ala that I want to speak about is What is it that we need to know about the characteristics and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing that inshallah ta'ala I will speak about is the biography of the author. And the third thing inshallah ta'ala is about this book and the attribution of this book to the author Al-Imam al Qutani rahimahullah. So if I repeat that again, Three things that we're going to be doing بِإِذْنِ الْكَرِيمِ In the explanation or the, the today's uh, session, inshaAllah ta'ala, as an introduction, before we go into the book. The first thing we're going to be speaking about is the name, Kitabu Sifat. What is Sifat? And what is it that we need to understand about Allah wa ta'ala's names and attributes? The second thing that I'm going to be speaking about is the name of the author that wrote this book, Al-Imam al Qutni, rahimahullah, his biography. And the third thing that inshallah ta'ala I'm going to be speaking about is this book, attributing it to Imam al Qutni, whether it is or whether it's not, and the discussions pertaining to that. If I start with giving you an understanding of what it means to believe in Allah's names and attributes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the tongue of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he legislated in the long famous hadith of Jibreel when Jibreel came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Jibreel said to the messenger فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ iman tell me about iman so he wanted him to tell him the articles of faith so our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-Imanu an tu'mina billah. Iman is to believe in Allah. So what, it, what does it mean to believe in Allah? To believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that you believe in his rububiyyah. And it means to believe in his uluhiyyah. And it also means to believe in his, his names and attributes. We're not going to be speaking about believing in Allah's rububiyyah. And we're not going to be speaking about believing in Allah Ta'ala's uluhiyyah. What we're going to be speaking about is what does it mean to believe in Allah's names and attributes? Because this is what this book that we're going to go through inshallah Ta'ala is talking about. To believe in Allah Ta'ala, it stands on ala thalathati usus. <coughs> It stands on three foundations. The first of the three is إِثْبَاتُ تُؤَفَامْ مَا أَثْبَتَهُ اللَّهُ لِنَفْسِهِ To believe in Allah's names and attributes, it stands on three foundations. So if you don't have these three foundations, you're not coming with believing in Allah in His names and attributes. And if you're not coming with believing in Allah's names and attributes, you're not coming with what? Believing in Allah. So it's a very concerning topic, it's very important. So, the first of the three is, which is the foundation it stands on, is إِثْبَاتُ تُؤَفَّامُ مَا أَثْبَتَهُ اللَّهُ لِنَفْسِهِ تُؤَفَّامُ 
whatever Allah has affirmed for himself. O oh, nafi, or it's to negate ma nafahu Allah an nafsihi. To negate from Allah that which he negated from himself. So the first one is affirming for Allah for what he's affirmed for himself. Negating from Allah that which he negated from himself. That's the first. The second is the second is nafyul mumathala fil khasais. Negating from Allah any resemblance in these unique characteristics of His. I'm going to explain each one properly. The third one is Get rid of the desire of wanting to know and ma'rifati kayfiyati asma illahi wa sifati. Get rid of the desire of wanting to know how Allah wa Taala's characteristics and names are. The how to the characteristics and the how to these names of Allah wa Taala. So let me go back to the first of the three foundations, which was what? Affirming for Allah wa Taala that which He affirmed for Himself and negating from Allah that which He what? Negated from Himself. <laughs> Every name of Allah. And every characteristics of Allah, in which we say this is Allah's name, or we say this is Allah's characteristics, it has to have come to us from what? It has to have come to us from the Quran or the Sunnah. Because if you're saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're affirming for Him that which He affirmed for Himself, then the names of Allah and the characteristics of Allah. لا يتجاوز القرآن والسنة. You're not allowed to go outside the Quran and the Sunnah. So if you say this is Allah's name, I'm going to say to you, where did you get it from? You have to bring an ayah from the Quran, or you have to have you have to have a hadith of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. The same applies with negation. You're not allowed to negate something from Allah, and you are not allowed to, huh? You are not allowed to get some, negate something from Allah unless you have it from the Quran or the or the Sunnah. So as much as affirmation requires Qur'an and Sunnah, so does negation require Qur'an and Sunnah. An example for affirming a characteristics. I can now come and say Allah is Hay and He's Qayyum. Allah is Hay, one who's alive. Qayyum, one who stands for the affairs of His creation. I am allowed to affirm that characteristics. Why am I? Because I have ayah 255 Surah Al-Baqarah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. So this verse tells me that Allah is hay and he's qayyum. Ayat al-Kursi. So I am allowed to affirm these characteristics for Allah. I'm also allowed to affirm the characteristics, mercy. Because I have ayah 133, Surah Al-An'am. وَرَبُّكَ الْغَنِيُّ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ وَرَبُّكَ الْغَنِيُّ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ Allah is one who is rich. And He is one who is merciful. <coughs> so I'm allowed to affirm mercy for Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. The second one is negation. <coughs> I'm also allowed to negate from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala what? I'm allowed to negate from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala no sleeping. And I'm also allowed to negate from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala sinah. Sinah and a no. I can negate those from Allah. And sinah means nu'as. It is the introduction of sleeping. Before you want to go to sleep, you start, you get tired and you start yawning. Huh? And you feel a bit you know, tired and whatnot. This is called a sinner. And noam is the actual sleep. I can negate that from Allah based on what ayah? Ayah 255 Surah Al-Baqarah. Which is what? لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. Allah does not feel sinner, nor does He feel noam. So I negated, I brought evidence for it. I affirmed, I brought in evidence for it. And those are the pillars 
those are the pillars Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah mention when it comes to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's what? His Uluhiyah, His Rububiyah, and His Al Asma' wa Sifat. Because La ilaha illallah stands on what? Ithbat and Nafi. Affirmation and negation. Very good. What's the second thing that it stands on? The second one is Nafiul Mumathala. You negate any resemblance fil khasa'is. In the things which Allah Taala is unique in, or even the characteristics which He has, we don't say that these characteristics are the like the characteristics of the creation. Even once we affirm it, now for instance, what did we just? What were the characteristics that we affirmed for Allah right now? Huh? For example, hayat. We affirm the characteristics hayat, sah? Does Allah Taala have these characteristics hayat? Naam. Where's the evidence for it? I gave it. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. Good. Do the creation live? Are they alive? Do they have these characteristics of hayat? You see? But then the second pillar tells me what? That I am not allowed to make Allah's characteristics resemble the characteristics of the creation. So when, what do I say? Hayatullahi jalla wa ala. Allah's hayat ليست كحيات المخلوقين. It is not like the life of the makhlukin. It's not like the hayat of the makhlukin. Also, I can give the characteristics of mercy to the creation. So and so is very merciful. And so is Allah merciful. But I say ورحمة الله جل وعلا. Allah's رحمة ليست كرحمة المخلوقين. It is not like the mercy of the creation. And where's the evidence for this second pillar? Is قوله تعالى the verse of Allah in Surah Al-Shura ayah 11 ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير If you look at this ayah ayah 11 in Surah Al-Shura Allah is refuting huh, two groups of people The first group of people who are being refuted here is ليس كمثله شيء They are the ones who what? Who take Allah's characteristics and they make the characteristics of Allah like the characteristics of the creation they are the they are the mushabbiha. They are what? The mushabbiha. So Allah is refuting the mushabbiha in the first part. The mushabbiha are, are who? The ones who take Allah's characteristics and they make it seem like it is exactly the characteristics of the creation. Allah refuted them by saying, Laysa kamithlihi shay. There's nothing like him. Allah also refuted the mu'attila, the second group of people, who say Allah. Who say Allah does not have any characteristics and they negate Allah's characteristics. Allah refuted them by saying, Wa huwa sami'ul basir. Or even if they negate some of Allah's characteristics, they are still mu'attila. They are still what? Mu'attila. So here, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah understood something from this verse, which what the other deviated groups didn't understand from it, which is Ahlul Sunnah took the middle path, which is. Which is إثباتٌ بغير تشبيه Affirmation without falling into تشبيه ونفيٌ and negation من غير تعطيل And negation without falling into تعطيل Are you with me? Where did they get that from? They, get that, they got that from the ayah This is a very important point Number the, second, the third foundation which it stands on The third foundation which it stands on, which is get rid of the desire of wanting to know how Allah's characteristics are. Don't even think about wanting to know. Why? Because to know Allah's characteristics, how it is, you would need the following. Number one, you would either need to see Allah wa ta'ala, which in this case, no one has. Or, you would need somebody who has seen him to tell you of him, which in this case we don't have. And the third one is, he tells you how he looks, which in this case we don't know the how. He hasn't told us the how of his characteristics. So for that reason, get rid of the desire of wanting to know the how. Stick to what? 
to stick to what he has told you subhanahu wa ta'ala in the affirmation and stick to what he has told you in the negation. Now that we have told and we spoke about, <coughs> now that we've spoken about the three pillars that it stands on, the three pillars that it, Allah's names and attributes, if you want to believe in it, <coughs> you have to come with these three. Now that we've spoken about it, we need to know nawaqid tawheed al asma'i wa sifat. What is it that nullifies it? What is it that if I come with, I will automatically go against believing in Allah's names and attributes in the correct methodology by being according to the path of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Two things if you do, they are nawaqid, they will nullify. Two things. If you do or if you come with, you will nullify your belief of Allah's names and attributes. The first one is At-Tamthil For example, Tamthil means what? Wajhullah, Allah's face Kawajhil makhluqeen is like the face of the creation Istiwa'ullah Allah being above is like Istiwa'ul makhluqeen It's like the creation's one And coming with this by doing mumathala, making Allah's characteristics and attributes like the characteristics of the attribute and the characteristics and attributes of the creation by making it the same is kufrun, is disbelief. Why? We we are the creation and we're deficient. And Allah wa ta'ala is kamil, he's complete. So comparing the complete one, Allah wa ta'ala, with the deficient creation is a what? Is affirming for Allah deficiency. And it is also going against the verses of Allah. فَلَا تَضْرِبُوا لِلَّهِ الْأَمْثَالِ Do not make anything equal to Allah wa ta'ala. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There's nothing like him. And I'm going to remind you one thing, this is very important. Every single group that went against Ahlul Sunnah, كل فرقة خالفت أهل السنة والجماعة في باب الأسماء والصفات وقعت في التمثيل. Every group who went against Ahlul Sunnah والجماعة in the names and the attributes of Allah, they fell into التمثيل. All of them. The second one. Second one, that if a person comes with, he goes against Al-Imanu bi asma'ihi wa sifati, believing in Allah's names and attributes, is At-Ta'til. Ta'til means what? It means to reject Allah's names and his characteristics. Or it means to reject some of Allah's names and some of Allah wa Ta'ala's characteristics. For example, that person says to you, لا يستوي على عرشي. Allah is not above his throne. وليس لله وجه. Allah does not have a face that befits him. He doesn't have that. And the list goes on. So we say to this Mu'attil who just did that, who said Allah does not go against his, uh, Allah is not above his throne, or Allah does not have a face that befits his majesty. He does. He says no. I don't believe that. No, that's not true. We say to that person, Allah يثبت. Allah affirms it for himself. وَأَنْتَ تَنْفِي And here you are coming here now and you're negating it. أَأَنْتَ أَعْلَمْ أَمِ اللَّهِ Are you more knowledgeable or is Allah more knowledgeable than you? The scholars of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah say that the Mu'attila, the people who have rejected Allah's names and attributes, maybe all of it or even some of it, they have, they have become like the disbelievers. They've come, become like the disbelievers. They resemble the disbelievers. How do they resemble the disbelievers? Didn't the disbelievers reject the name of Ar-Rahman? As Allah said in Surah Al-Ra'ad, Ayah 30, وَهُمْ يَكْفُرُونَ بِالرَّحْمَانِ They disbelieve in Ar-Rahman. What did that mean? وَهُمْ يَكْفُرُونَ بِالرَّحْمَانِ أَيْ لَا يَثْبُتُونَ إِسْمَ الرَّحْمَانِ They refuse to affirm the name Ar-Rahman. Remember when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Sulhul Hudaybiyah, Sahih? When he said, Bismika Allahumma. Are you with me? 
and then um, Suhail ibn Amrin he said Uktub uh, you know, the Prophet ﷺ wrote Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and then Suhail ibn Amr what did he say? he said write Bismika Allahumma Suhail ibn Amr said write Bismika Allahumma we, they, we, we don't know this ar-Rahman ar-Rahim you're talking about so they rejected it so this is the same thing that these Mu'attila are falling into rejecting Allah's names and attributes the Ta'atil two things fall under it the Ta'atil it happens in two ways basically it for happens in the way of ta'wil and the way of tafwil. It happens by ta'wil and it also happens by tafwil. Ta'wil means nafyu zahir nas wa ithbatu ma'na jadid lahu. The ta'wil basically means you negate the apparent meaning that it has and you affirm a brand new name meaning. For instance, you say, Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa. You say, istawa has an apparent meaning which is above, according to the Arabic language. There's no other meaning that it carries. Istawa means ala wartafa. Okay? So they want to go against the apparent meaning that this ayah has. And so what do they do? They change that meaning to a brand new meaning. By saying istawa, inna ma ma'anahu istawla. Istawa here means istawla. So they gave a different meaning to it from what it was before. This is what ta'wil means. And as we know, my beloved brothers and sisters, the way we should understand Allah's names and attributes are based upon its apparent meaning. This is qa'idah to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And nafham sifat Allah that we understand Allah's characteristics and attributes ala zahiriha at its apparent meaning. Ala zahiriha meaning what? At its apparent meaning muqtada lughat al Arab. What the Arabs know this word to be to mean. This is aqidah to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. According to the Arabs, the word istawa has the meaning ala wartafa. These are the, from the meanings that are in the word istawa. They don't know it anywhere, and they don't know it in any other way. So you have to stick with the apparent meaning that the Arabs have. That is what's meant by <coughs> that we affirm the characteristics of Allah Taala and His apparent. That's what goes against that. We uh, it goes against. It goes against, that concept goes against ta'wil. The second one is a tafwil. A tafwil. Tafwil means negating the apparent meaning. So the person, what does he do? He negates the apparent meaning. But he does not assert a new meaning. In other words, he says, I don't know. And this, this second one falls under ta'atil, just like ta'wil falls under ta'atil, which is rejecting Allah's names and attributes. But as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, that tafwil is worse than ta'wil. Because tafwil means the messenger of Allah was ignorant. The companions were ignorant of verses of the Quran which they were reciting. It is accusing Salafu Hadi Ummah by being donkeys that are carrying scrolls. That they are ones who carry scrolls. They don't know what they're reading, they're just praying in the Salah. When they say, Wallahu bima ta'amanuna, Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim, they just don't know what they're saying, they're just saying it. And this one is worse. So, Salafu had the ummah, they did not know and they did not do tafwidul ma'na. They knew what the ma'na meant. What they did do, like it, is tafwidul kayf. As for the how, they didn't know. 
And they mentioned that Allah knows what he means by, uh, sorry, Allah knows the kayfiyah. <coughs> and the famous statement of Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, Imam, sorry, Imam Malik rahimahullah, al-istiwa'u ma'alum wal kayfu majhul. The how is unknown to us. The how is unknown to us. Idan, kullum min al-ta'wil wa al-tafwil ta'atilun. La nisqa'idah. Both ta'wil and tafweed are ta'atil. Meaning they are rejections of Allah Taala's names and attributes. So if they are, if ta'wil and tafweed is ta'atil, ta'atil falls under ilhad. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَائِهِ سَيُجْزَوْنَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Ilhad means what? Ilhad means deviating, diverting from that which was obligatory upon you in terms of Allah's names and attributes. You are turning away from the path that you should have been on in regards to Allah's names and attributes. So, the pay attention. The what do you call it? The mufawwid and the mu'awwil are mu'attila. And a mu'attil, he is falling into ilhad. And the ayah applies on him, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, They will be rewarded the day of judgment for the evil in which they have done. So, what's the khulasa in Allah's names and attributes the way we deal with it? It is ithbatun bila tamthil, affirmation without any resemblance. Wa tanzihun, and negating from Allah, bila ta'atil, without falling into ta'atil. And that is what summarizes this point that we are mentioning. Now we have an understanding of what it means to affirm Allah's names and what? Attributes. Now we have an understanding of what it means to affirm Allah Taala's names and attributes. We now move on to the second point, which is, who is the author of this book? Who is Al Imam Al Hafiz Ad Darqutniyu Rahimahullah? 